vanta oltre 13 anni di esperienza nel settore del turismo e dei viaggi, ha lavorato per Travel Weekly negli Stati Uniti e per Visit Britain e numerose linee da crociera. Helena è approdata in TripAdvisor nel dicembre 2008 in qualità di prima specialista dedicata esclusivamente agli uffici turistici in Europa e nel 2011 ha portato all'ampliamento al del Destination Marketing, Marketing Team. Director of Industry Relations for TripAdvisor, Helena Egan. Thank you. Ooh, that is extremely loud. Sorry. Uh, buongiorno. And that's sadly where I end. Um, I don't speak more Italian than that. I have to stand in here. But I'm going to get blind. A little bit, but. Um, so, as Giancarlo introduced me, I understood half of that. Um, I'm Helena Egan. I look after the industry relations for TripAdvisor globally. And really, the key interest in my heart and our company's heart is to work together with the industry. I'm originally from Finland, so to apologize for my accent, and I tend to speak extremely fast, so um, I'm trying to slow down. So I wanted to give you a very, very quick update on TripAdvisor, first of all, a little bit of our numbers. Then I wanted to talk about how Italy is doing on TripAdvisor. Data that it's actually meaningful to you, who's looking at Italy and so on. Then I talk about a little lodging study that we did recently, very shortly about the reviews. But then I want to talk about instant booking, which is a new product for TripAdvisor available for independent hotels. So very quick overview. We went live in uh, year 2000. And this speaks for itself. So you see our timeline, how we've grown throughout the years. Our newest numbers are 350 million unique users a month come to TripAdvisor to find travel information. Why is this important to you? Because if you are any kind of travel business owner, your product will be most likely listed on TripAdvisor. We have over 200 million reviews and opinions live, and you can read the rest, 90 million members. But one of the key points that differentiates us from a lot of sites is we have 190 pieces of content coming to the site every single minute. So I'm not going to count how many that is in 20 minutes, but if someone wants to, please do. We also manage and operate um, 23 other travel media brands. You may know Viator, all about booking your attractions and your tours. We also manage and own The Fork. There's Fork in Italy, which is a restaurant booking platform, and various others. What this means is TripAdvisor has moved from the trip planning platform to a site that's available for travelers throughout their trip. This speaks for itself. Only 10% of our reviews are negative. The average scores, Italy leads on the accommodation level, which is fantastic news. On the restaurants, quite high up as well. Spain is leading there. And on attractions, also fairly high. So this is the average rating looking at, at the year 2014. We have a lot of fantastic data and statistics, so give us and our PR team who's out there any questions you have if you wanted to obtain more data. This is your domestic audience looking at Italy versus the international audience. So you can see the peak for both domestic and international is definitely happening in the summer. But the great news for the country overall is you have a solid traffic coming into your country, researching your beautiful country throughout the year. So where are the people located who want to come to Italy and who are researching Italy? You can see there's slight variation from 2013 to 2015, but the top four remain very, very solid. But the fantastic news is that on your top 10 global set, you have countries like China, Australia, and Russia. And you know the Asian markets are really up and coming, and within the next 10, 15 years, there's going to be a huge volume coming in. So you're already gaining great presence for the Chinese market. Mobile. You know, everyone says this. Over 50% of TripAdvisor traffic currently comes on mobile devices, mobile and tablet. It's a mixture between the app and the web. But this is just, look at Chinese. When they look at Italy, 60% of the Chinese population are looking at your properties, your country, 
your attractions and restaurants from mobile device. And it's really, really important that you are mobile ready, because that's really the future. Any kind of mobile device, it doesn't have to be a great app, as long as your website works on mobile. I don't think this is a rocket science. The domestic audience is mainly looking at restaurants um, on TripAdvisor, whilst the international are looking at hotels. Where you see the traffic going down, the interest going down, it's natural. It's always the December time when, when everything quiets down and people go and celebrate their Christmas. This is telling a little bit how the reviews are growing. And again, we split it by domestic, which means the Italian audience reviewing Italy versus the international audience reviewing Italy. So this shows you how the reviews have grown over time. And um, you can see the restaurant reviews are really, really heavy again for the domestic audience, whereas the accommodation reviews are heavier for the international audience. So this is showing how many people are reviewing your country. Great news, almost uh, over 43 thousand businesses have won a certificate of excellence, which means that on average you have to have uh, more than four bubbles rating throughout the year. And these businesses really have done an excellent, so excellent, um, given excellent service and excellent job to deserve this. So just very quickly, Focusrite and a German-based consulting group run a study about um, market dynamics and distribution channels. And I think this is interesting. We are, they asked, what is the most important? For is it driving direct bookings, or is it the increasing third-party co costs? So driving direct bookings in Italy right now represents 20%, whereas the increase in third-party costs um, is higher on 34%. So these two components obviously lead us talking about our new product called Instant Booking. I had to highlight this because when we, not just us, but all the travel review sites come on the top, it's fantastic news. So we know that we, we have a great place in the marketplace and we keep on growing. Just very quickly, TripAdvisor is all about travelers. This is people wanting to help another traveler to have a great trip. Don't forget this. When you look at the, the content, industry is important. Think about those 350 million unique person, people coming on the site and reading the content. This is something I wanted to mention, because as a business, I'm here to talk about the commercial product, obviously. But as a business, you can run your own listing, and you can run it so well without actually paying any money to TripAdvisor. This is a uh, atmosphere research group, it's a third party, that did a white paper really understanding the engagement. Does it really matter if you engage with TripAdvisor? It does. So if you have at least one verified owner, meaning that you have taken ownership of your property, your attraction, your restaurant on Tripad, or your destination on TripAdvisor. Add the management photos. Please do, because if you don't add your own management photos, your professional photos, it will drive people to look at other professional sites like, such as um, Last Minute, Expedia, or Booking.com, and answer to those reviews. Because those numbers, I'm not going to repeat them because they're behind me and in front of me. It really makes a difference. If you interact with the listing, it makes a difference how consumers look at you. I sometimes say that if I go to a concierge and I say, oh, I would like to have a foam pillow, and he just goes, go away. That's how people now feel if you don't respond to a review. They feel like they express their opinion. Please do respond and use the Q&A functionality as well. So if a person who's booked your property wants to ask you a question, make sure you answer them, because that's what they need. So, on our commercial products, we've got four products available for hotels commercially. One, it, one of them is not listed here. It's our display, our banner advertising. But the three that I'm going to talk about are business listing, our meta search, and instant booking. So there has been a confusion, I think, maybe not confusion, but questions at least, on how do you appear on the top of your destination on TripAdvisor. It's purely based on three factors. Our algorithm looks at quality, so how high bubbles you have, how recent your reviews are. So if your last review has come two months ago, oh, for heaven's sake, ask people to, to review and rate your, rate your business, because you need those be, to be fresh. 
and obviously the volume. And the volume is also important. So if you have three reviews and one is negative, it's going to influence things. If you have 100 reviews and one is negative, it's really not going to sway things one way or another. So business listing is an annual subscription-based listing. The pricing is, is individually calculated for each property based on the return on investment. You will be owning the link to your website, your phone number, your email, and you can also have special offers. The great thing about this is it's always on the top of the page. You're always on top of anyone else, any other advertisers. And the special offer is something that we also email to our database. So there are a lot, a lot of things. And this is only available for hotel itself. No one else can purchase this product. Then we have TripConnect CPC to so our meta model. So meta model means what it says on a tin. It's a meta search. It's our price comparison that runs on a site. And um, hotels can equally go and bid for this placement as long as they have their, their um, connectivity partner, so either the IBs or the, uh, who, who provides the online uh, available inventory. And then, sorry, this is MetaSearch helping users to price compare. Sorry, I added another slide. So why did we create Instant Booking? What drove us to it? Was it the industry or was it the consumers? It was 100% the consumers. Because travelers are so used to coming. If you think we're the, by far the world's largest travel site by traffic, people want to come to our site, and they want to interact. Now we have um, attraction bookings, restaurant bookings. So it's only natural to bring a hotel booking opportunity. So we wanted to take the friction out of it. So when people click on Book Now, they don't actually get thrown into a Marriott website or independent hotel website or, or Priceline or, or Expedia. What happens? On a meta, meta search remains here. So if you look at the side on the top, you have the business listing. On, a, on this side, <laughs> left, uh, you have the uh, meta search. And then you have a separate thing in the middle that is book now on TripAdvisor. It's a premier placement. The experience for the consumer is fantastic. It's really two clicks, and you're done. So how does it look for a traveler? Again, if you look at Hotel Nostalgia, they have a already a business listing. You can see they have a special rate, 25% off early promo. So they are using their, um, I can't really point, but you know what I'm doing, talking about. <laughs> so you, they already have that. The next thing that comes up is the meta search, and then book on TripAdvisor. So they can see it's 60 pounds on book on TripAdvisor, and then it says book now. I know it says book on TripAdvisor, and it looks like we are an online travel agency but we are something slightly different with this product. Because what happens, you click on that, instead of driving you to a search page on an online travel agency where you have other competitors coming up, you remain on that environment. You go straight on a list of rooms available. You can see, oh, if I spend, if I spend four pounds more, I can actually have a nicer room. You go and choose your room. You add your details. You don't have to be a TripAdvisor member. You just add your details into this. You add your credit card details, like you were making a payment. TripAdvisor is uh, PCI compliant. And that beautiful term means that we don't process the payment. What we do is we, what we, do is we pass on the payment to the partner. So the, the, as a consumer, as a traveler, you get an email saying, your reservation has been confirmed. This email comes from TripAdvisor. But it says, if you need the further assistance with this booking, please call Hotel Nostalgia at this number. It will have the logo there. It will have all the information of the property there. Oh, OK. <laughs> and second email that comes in will be from the property saying, thank you for your booking to TripAdvisor. We are now confirming your booking. So as a property, you have every single detail of the client. You have their name, their address. You have their credit card details. You have their dates. You have everything. And that point on, everything is between you and that guest. So TripAdvisor washes its hands in a way off of the guest, and it's all with you. So if the guest wants to cancel, wants to upgrade, wants to change their booking, that all has to happen with the partner that we link to. We don't have the capacity of, of dealing with that booking. So we have already uh, over 230,000 properties bookable on instant booking. 
We are dealing with, uh, we have seven out of the 10 global chains, such as Accor, such as Marriott, as our partners. And our recent, uh, uh, our recent partnership was with Priceline. Right now, Priceline is live with Booking.com, and we're looking into expanding that uh, to, to other Priceline brands. And obviously, we have our 100 certified connectivity partners, and this is really there to help the independent hotels. So if you want to join TripAdvisor Instant Booking, um, you can work with one of these guys. Obviously, Book Assist is with us on the stage today. They are one of our connectivity partners. Um, but there are 199 others as well. And one thing I need to highlight, because I had a question today saying, why can't I see instant booking on TripAdvisor when I, when I look at it? It's only live on UK and US right now. We are hoping to roll out um, in other countries soon. We are testing in some English markets. But right now, it's live on US and UK IPs. So you need to be physically based on that country to be able to see the availability. But it doesn't stop you from working with us on, on instant booking, because obviously UK and US were your highest traffic um, countries for Italy. So it's, uh, it's available for, from those countries. And I have four minutes and 20 seconds left. Not bad. Um, so I just wanted to give you an overview. But what I really would like to do next is um, I, this is your job, not mine, to invite people on a stage. Come on, Giancarlo, you do it. <laughs> no problem. OK, thank you, Elena. I invite, while they're, they're bringing the chairs, I do invite your, your tall backer. First of all, uh, we have uh, Thomas London, which was market, is, is marketing manager of Revinate Europe. Hello, Thomas. We'll be conducting this uh, little slot for me. It's a friend of BTO. It's uh, from uh, Book Assist with a past experience in Hotels.com, LastMinute.com, et cetera, et cetera. A friend of BTO, Yaya Fecciati. Just wait a second that Elena is changing. All right. Perfect. Perfect. That was too much. <laughs> I thought you were serious when you said that. <laughs> no, I was kidding. I thought you, you can handle the conversation. I'm gone. I've done my job. I promise you, I'm, I'm this guy. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just that was wanted a great presentation, uh, Elena. Thank you. Well done. Um, uh, I'm a very big wait, fan of TripAdvisor, no, yeah. really. Um, when TripAdvisor launched back in 2000, I remember it was actually an, an amazing uh, innovation because it allowed consumers for the first time to be part of the travel experience, it allows consumers to have a voice through the reviews. Uh, and I think that was really amazing. And the uh, you know, customer reviews were at the heart of the kind of TripAdvisor DNA. But um, of the last few th years, a lot of things have been changing uh, and, and rapidly. So you know, TripAdvisor now is a review website, is a Meta search website is a media website is a OTA like website with instant booking. What is TripAdvisor <laughs> now? What is it? Jobby Big Kelly said we are so unique. Um, what we are is our, our, our pricing model, our site model is, is, is media. So pretty much 100% of our revenue comes from various advertising. So it's a mixture of the, the, the cost per click, now commission model, uh, display model. And we have uh, also the annual subscription model. So, so we are really a media side. And the model for media side means that we sell advertising, but we don't process um, and, and fulfill bookings. All right. So that's the biggest difference that differentiates us from an OTA. For, for it means the consumer is, is with, with the restaurant online bookings, with the, with the attraction online bookings, and also with instant booking, they slowly will be able to do much more on TripAdvisor than just uh, plan and research their perfect trip. They can actually start booking components. They will be always driven to the third parties to fulfill their booking, but it just gives them that trusted environment. OK. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second. And just in, in relation to Meta, you know, hotels hate reliance on third parties, as you know. Um, when, when Meta Search was first introduced, I think hotels love that because okay. yeah, it allows them to, to Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll repeat, okay? Um, you know, when, when Meta Search was introduced, 
hotels found that really, really uh, fantastic because initially it was only the OTAs that were powering the meta search, remember that. And I think what it did, it allowed them to, to have a, a direct access, a direct marketing initiative uh, for hotels themselves and allows, allowed them as well to reduce their kind of reliance on, on OTAs a little bit. Um, unfortunately, the direct business has been shrinking over the last five years. We've seen the numbers. I think 75% of online travel in Europe is done via OTAs. Now, with TripAdvisor or asking consumers to book on TripAdvisor again, is that not a risk to increase further this reliance? And you know, is it not, to, you know, this, this, is it not a disadvantage for hotels to drive traffic when they really need it? I mean, do you understand that from a hotel perspective? What, what's your thoughts on that? So I would say one of the key things that we've always done is, is the products that we build on TripAdvisor are always available for SMEs, for small and medium-sized enterprises, whether you're a hotel, slightly less for restaurants and attractions because they have a lot of free opportunities. So even with instant booking, Priceline is one of our partners, but they're still part of the traffic that the hotel can own themselves. It is a commission-based model, but it's interesting because when we launched um, um, business listing, hotels were like, well, I'm paying an annual fee. I don't know how many bookings I get. Right. Then they could go and compete for Meta. They said, well, I'm paying for Click, but I don't know if they're going to convert. And now we're offering them the opportunity that you don't pay anything unless you have that conversion. So we still have those three models available, and travelers seek them all together on the same place. There's, there's no direct prioritization, except the hotel's own listing will always be on the top. So there are still those three models available. And I think the reliance on OTAs um, for hotels is, is, in, is, is, you know, is in, in, in evident because you have to, if you look at the globe and all the languages that people speak, OTAs have their, their, their place in the market because they have the customer service, they have those languages, they can do a lot of things for them, whereas TripAdvisor is there really to, to offer those three options, plus the fourth one is if you do a great job and do your PR on top, um, you may still get the booking okay, even so, if you don't have so any links. Is, is just in terms of, is, is the um, book, inst, you know, book on TripAdvisor instant booking a, a direct booking? Is that, is that direct booking? How or? do you define a direct booking? <laughs> I define direct booking as a booking that goes on the hotel website or the hotel mobile website where the customer is fully engaged with the hotel brand uh, where the, the hotel has the ability to showcase all its prices, all its pictures, all its services, all its uh, upselling, etc. That's how I define it uh, as, a, as a... So um, I mean, and the quite, because TripAdvisor also has been saying that instant booking is, is, is a direct booking. So I'm just, again, just interested to see what, what's your thought on that. So if, if it also, I think it's also definition. So if... Yeah. if uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm asking you again. I, I, uh, I have a quote from, uh, from Steve here. I'll give it to you in a minute. <laughs> like I said... I, I want your answer first. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, I'll stick to the messaging because my PR lady is looking straight at me. So Steve um, has the beauty of, of being the CEO and, um, and being able to answer the question maybe more thoroughly than I would. But yeah. the, the, the only exact direct booking would be the business listing where we are driving the traffic straight to the landing page yeah. of the hotel. Yeah whereas we call it more assisted booking. I think the direct booking, if you look at the definition, is very much about owning the customer. So like the research that Focusrite did together with the, the German-based company recently, they looked at how important it is to actually have the, the direct client details. So right. there's a lot of confusion. If you look at definition of an OTA, you could look at definition of a review site, you have definition of a direct booking. There's loads of ways of understanding it, but we have always been very, very clear that, um, that that's the path the consumer takes. They don't actually land to the, to the, to the website at all. They right. do all of that in TripAdvisor, put their credit card details on TripAdvisor, we then pass on that payment to the, to the consumer. So all the consumer doesn't necessarily need to, or doesn't necessarily see the website. Then it's the hotel's point to go and attract them to, the, to their own website and to their other services and go and upsell their restaurants and spas. So it sure. depends how you look at direct booking. I would call it more maybe assisted booking or frictionless oh. booking. I, I'm interested, just, just read for you, you know, what Steve said, okay? He said, uh, this was at the recent Global Technology Media Conference in Boston. He said, to the degree that with instant booking, TripAdvisor now takes the bookings and suppliers all the consumer information, helps them download their favorite apps and all the rest of it that we're happy to provide. Well, 
we become no longer direct booking, but another distribution channel. So I mean, that, that's that's uh, what what that's the. Um, I'm just going to probably ask Thomas what, what's his thoughts on that. I think it's, if you ask what's important for a hotelier, is it important for a hotelier owning the customer data or is it important for a hotelier to pay less commission? And I think that's about direct booking. Like, in my eyes, if you provide a direct booking but you give the customer data to the hotel, the hotel still pays you know, 10 to 15 to 70 percent commission, whatever it is. They still complain because in their eyes, nothing has changed. So in that sense, TripAdvisor is still the same to them, only with the benefit that they got, and also the hassle of, of dealing with the customer directly, and because you, you know how much work it is with the cancellations and everything. So it, it, how you, what is the, the question is more, what does the hotelier want? And you, I think you had some interesting stats on that earlier, like, hey, do they want to own the customer data or do they want to pay less commission in that sense? But I think also if you, you know, when you looked at the, the consumer experience, when they click on the, the book on TripAdvisor, yeah. even if, if it's one of the Priceline brands that they're clicking on, what do they land on the Priceline or the Booking.com site is the hotel's selection of rooms, whereas the meta search lands them into a listing where other hotels are present as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it, there, is, there is a difference between, between the both. Yeah. So it's really, and it, it really is making it, I, the frictionless word is very, but it is, that's what it is. There, there is no friction for the consumer. Yeah. But you're right, on a hotel's point of view, obviously if I was a hotelier, I would love to have the booking straight to my website and completely free without having to use anyone. Mm -hmm. But it's extremely hard to happen, to be honest, um, thinking of how many properties, there's 30 or 34,000 properties here in, in, in Italy. So it, it's how do you differentiate if, if you don't use any third parties? But it, it's, I think the direct booking and instant booking and, and um, express booking, I think, was, was what uh, was referred by Trivago. This is a new trend. It's, it's mm -hmm. something new to the market, and I think the definitions will change when we go along. But it's important for us to follow companies like Focusrite to understand what is, what, is, what is the industry's opinion? What is important for the hotelier? Where do they see the importance coming from and I think that's where yeah. there has to be a link and and you have to offer all the different options and, yeah. and that's where we do lead. And I think in that sense the um, uh, companies like you, like TripAdvisor, Trivago and, and, and doing a fantastic job and making it as easy as possible for the consumer to book that room. Uh, you, you know how difficult it can be to book a room on an, on an independent hotel's website if it's not, majority of them are not optimized to book a room quickly and, and, and uh, efficiently, and I think that's for a consumer, it, it's a great thing. You can easily, within the site, book it directly without, without all the hassle around it. Let's say it like that. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I was, I was just interested to see what the philosophy behind it. I, I, I don't think actually it's necessarily a bad thing. You know, uh, I think it also helps hotels to lower some sort of dependency if they do it, play it right and properly. But, but that, that side aside, I mean. It took some time to get hotels on the program. Uh, and you had some very good brands participating, and also a lot of you know, CRSs and booking engines participating. And everybody actually got excited about the whole thing. Uh, finally, maybe we'll be able to compete. Um, or, and then you go and you sign a deal with the, the devil. <laughs> Booking.com, what, what's that about? I don't know if I would Why call is them. that? I mean, do you understand <laughs> the concern of these people here? <laughs> I know it's not you who signed it, probably, but what, what, what's the what's the thinking behind that? Well, we always refer back to the consumer and the needs of the consumer. Right. So, in order to have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of bookable hotels on a site, a partner like Priceline will offer us an, an invaluable inventory. It's fantastic inventory to have on a site. Right. And you know, the, the, obviously, the independent hotels they they need to get the grips of the model, we, we live on the English speaking sites, right? Oh, sorry, in UK and US and testing on the English speaking sites. When we move, move along, I think there's going to be much more pickup from the independent hotels. And the great news is uh, Priceline won't be able to own the position 100%. There's always going to be a position for the, for the hotel themselves to go and, and bid for it as well. It's going to be a little bit tough, though, to get in because, you know, with all the, the number of supplier supply for that Booking.com have all the languages they have, all the data they will get via, you know, participating in that. It'll be slightly different for, for, I mean, that's one thing we need probably clarity for hotels to know that they could still be part of. I'm still not clear how that's going to 
how they can be able to show up on the website. They definitely can, and, and obviously I, I would not speak against any of, the, of our fantastic partners, but if your, if your room isn't available by any of these, of, of these large, um, large OTAs, then, you know, then they can't go and bid for that spot for you. Okay. So okay. there is always that. All right, okay. Uh, Thomas, do you have any? Yeah, I'm in quite interested. You mentioned in your uh, presentation you had, uh, you had about 90 million members currently on, on TripAdvisor. I roughly calculated that's more than Starwood and Marriott, I think, combined. How do you envision this membership will continue to uh, evolve? And I mean, like, I, I, you know what I like because I write reviews on TripAdvisor. So from that, you can distill information that I like certain type of hotels or I stayed in certain type of hotels. Um, how do you envision that be transferred directly when I book a hotel the next time my information moves from TripAdvisor to the hotel so I don't have to tell if I want a smoking room or a non-smoking room, for example? Um, what's your thought on that and how do you, how is that membership concept working within uh, TripAdvisor? Well, right now, like I said, you can, you can use instant booking mm -hmm. uh, and book, book, um, do the assisted booking on TripAdvisor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wow, Assistant, even I should book on TripAdvisor yeah. um, without, uh, without being a member. So yeah. um, we have 90 million members, that's correct. And, and of those members, a lot of them have used our Just For You feature. I love the Just For You feature because every, every place I go to, I take out of the chain hotels. Sorry of any, for any chains who are here, but I do. And I just look at independent hotels, boutique hotels, so I get a very different selection for myself. But we also ask what type of traveler you are. So mm -hmm. you can say whether you travel as a, as a couple, or as, as with family and so on. There's a lot of data there, but I think data is a big thing for the future. And how far can we go to, to personalize the experience? And how will that personalization then furthermore influence the bookings that are happening through instant booking or through other partners that I can't answer. But uh, certainly owning and, and finding and mining more of the data and understanding that consumer behavior and, and preference, it's very important because mm -hmm. to a certain extent, the consumers want to be offered information that's for them, a certain extent, it also gets very intrusive because you go like, well, how, how, how do you know yeah. that I drink a lot of bubbles? <laughs> and, 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 and then for, the, for that's for the consumer side. For the hotel side, it, it used to be the pinnacle that you were supposed to be on the, the, the first you know, page of TripAdvisor, so, so you do your best to, to be a good hotelier and, and get five-star reviews. But with the, with the just for you settings, if I look at my TripAdvisor feed, I get recommendations that are definitely not in the top 50 in, in a city. So how frustrating is that for hoteliers? Or, and, and is TripAdvisor then losing its relevancy in that sense for, for you know, being a review site and, and getting the best hotel in the city versus the hotel that pays the most to be on top? Well, the two things. The Just For You feature also gives you the highest, um, highest on, on our algorithms, so mm -hmm. on our popularity index, on that category but you can easily flip that back. So I very often flip that back and actually see, and see it shows you the positioning of those hotels that are the category you're looking at, so just for you. But on the side, you can see how many of the hotel is in, in the overall uh, popularity index for the destination. So you can flip that easily. And I do that very often. I look at both, I see what is the actual number one hotel in this destination, and what is the number one hotel that fits my needs, does have the Wi-Fi, does have the gym, does have certain things that mm -hmm. I really want from the hotel. So. I think there's both ways, but there's nothing that will ever override the fact that if you don't have a great service, it will come and bite you in the backside. It's, it's service is one of the biggest things that, that gives you the bubbles. It isn't whether you have a lift or 24 hour room service. That isn't what's, what's gonna keep, make and break that customer experience. It is the service, 100%. It's, it's, and that's important. So I would always try to be on, a, on, a, on yeah. having the, the full rating on any review site. Um, because it, 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 it tells you that the customers have come home and gone like, wow, yeah. that was unbelievable. And oh, that's what you want to be offering them. So the importance of that hasn't really changed, but it, it helps the hotels to differentiate themselves. So you're kind of in a situation that when you, if you're a romantic couples hotel, but you're not really great for, 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 for families with small children, you can highlight yourself in that property and you'll come up in those searches. So you'll have also people who have the expectations to stay in a hotel like yours and they, we will fulfill them easier mm. than trying to please absolutely everyone. So it's just another step that we're taking, but flipping back to the, the normal search is, is very, very easy and it's also very evident on a site, so you, you have both side by side. We, we're yeah. just gonna see if there's a question on Florida? Yeah. Yes. Table. It's very dark in there. Hi there, one of the things that we 
learned from the independent hotels research was how many independent properties just lack the connectivity. You mentioned that earlier. And what has kind of driven the decision at TripAdvisor to partner, and you have a wonderful partner, of course, sitting to your left, you know, versus have kind of being more in the driver's seat that perhaps Booking.com is doing with the Booking Suite? Sorry, I have to ask you to repeat the question. I didn't yeah, get it. It's hard to hear from, from up there. So in terms of assisting hotels that lack connectivity, what is driving the decision at TripAdvisor from working with the partners, yeah. such as Book Assist, yeah. versus the strategy that Booking.com is taking with Booking Suite, kind of being a little more in the driver's seat? Sorry, yeah. gotcha. Okay. See, I always have to see a no, person. No, the sound it's up there is very <laughs> difficult. For yeah, yeah. It is yeah. also, when I don't see a person, I'll go like, hang on. Um, we work very, I mean, we have a whole connectivity team that's led by Maud Lapant, who has done an incredible job globally. So we really go, go out of our way to find connectivity partners. And we also introduce the, the property. So we did, a, we did a great test in Italy, first ever, with some of the destinations, where we helped the destination to connect their database with a connectivity partner and be the first ones to really work with us on, on Trip Connect and, 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 and furthermore later on in instant booking when it's going to come live, but with Trip Connect. So we went and, and found those connectivity partners that, that had the best um, ability to help these, these DMOs. So I think it was, uh, I won't name the DMO because if I say it wrong, I'll be in trouble. But um, it was, some of the regional tourism boards were very keen on this and that's really what we're doing. So when I said we have 100 partners, it's, it's continuously growing and, and from Bukas's point of view, you probably know that yeah. we work very closely with you and you have your own account manager and, yeah. and there's a constant kind of involvement and, 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 and helping that if there are hotels who need partners, we can also do those introductions. From our perspective, it was a question of building you know, the interface uh, to the API that TripAdvisor needed uh, you know, and communicate all the information to them in terms of rates and descriptions and and also doing all the rest of it, you know, when the booking goes, it has to go to our system, we have to send it, and the customer, the payment, everything else. And, and then immediately it allows all the hotels to be part of it. And yep. I, I think you bring up an excellent point. I think it's very interesting where booking is going, and then, to, sorry to take the conversation a little bit from TA to, to booking, but I, I think it's, it's interesting how that's going to develop, that home self-service hotel here for independent hotels. But what I've heard from hotels is that there's, not a lot of interest yet. There's very skepticism, and, and I, I, I don't know the numbers, nobody will tell you, but I, I haven't seen it taken off as a massive success yet. And I think the, ho the hotels still rely on, on TripAdvisor booking the OTAs uh, while they complain about it. They haven't, haven't, there is a solution, but they haven't jumped to that solution yet. Um, I don't know what you, your vision on that is, or if you. I, I just agree, and that's a long way to go. I mean, the. The research proved that there is still the majority of these smaller properties, do, they lack the connectivity they st and it's going to be a challenge to continue to work with them and convince them. Absolutely. I mean, in, in, in specific areas within Europe, I and mean, when you look at the numbers, it looks huge, but it is fragmented. There's a portion, I mean, most of the hotels, luckily, in big destinations, Rome and Paris and London and Rome, uh, name it, they all have good websites, they all have systems, that, but when you go to resort areas, to ski areas, to, you know, then you'll find more fragmented markets, which we don't serve, we can't serve either. So that's kind of a complex thing. Probably for a booking suite type of product will be good for those people, because also some of them have two rooms, five rooms, 10 rooms, it's not really our swat, sweet spot, for example. So I think, you know, that the, the main with the focus for the hotels for a company like us is, is within within the big destinations and city. Sorry, you've got a question there, right? Yes, it's uh, about trust. As uh, different countries are releasing a digital identity, so in Italy we will start uh, next January. So do you think even a, a certification authority would be useful for you to use it as a, a way to, to uh, allow to, to understand uh, if the a kind of certification of data even on the side of the, the, the offer, if you think, uh, if you, how, how do you manage when there is the change of property uh, and, uh, and there is maybe you don't have the capillarity on the, on the land to, to understand what it is going on? So, and uh, even another question is about the blockchain. Do you think blockchain would be a way to uh, try to understand if the, there is the trust on, uh, on the customer? 
This, uh, I think, in relation to when properties change ownership or start rating or I think the volume probably, is that right? Is the digital identity? Yeah. Do you think digital identity can be the way to give trust to, to reviews okay. in some way? Digital identity as, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come but on, Eduardo, you, give me more. Do you mean digital identity from no, the consumer? Every country is, the is uh, in Italy, we will start next January. Uh, we will have the, the certification that uh, this uh, smartphone is related to my peop to my, uh, person, a, a real person. Mm. This been, will enable the, a, a lot of services. In, in, uh, in tourism, it's, uh, it's, kind of, it's quite difficult because every country will do his own identity. So we can use the Eston identity or the France, uh, French identity. And so, which means not the, uh, which is not the uh, identity card. Uh, it's uh, only to assure that behind the smartphone there is a, a real person. So I think I was asking you if this can be a way to check uh, and to give trust, uh, to give more trust to reviews yeah. and whatever. I, I, yeah, I think so. And if it's, if it's, that's, I think the member concept of, if you're talking about a, on a, on a consumer level, the, the concept of being a member, and, and, and I think that will help you in the verified reviews. If you're, if you're a member, at TripAdvisor and you write these ratings, it's, it's, it's easier to be trusted that these ratings are, are right. And I think in the future that, that, that Trip, TripAdvisor could play a role in that or, or Facebook could play a major role in that and they already connect. I, that will be my passport for the future to, to verify that I'm, hmm. I'm real, let's say it like that. I have one more question there. Um, yeah, yeah. In terms of... Um, we're actually fine. <laughs> That's we it. That's I it. think we don't have time for one more question. Thank you, that was an excellent <laughs> slot. Thank, thank you, you, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Yaya, and of course, thank you, thank you the ladies, Elena Egan.